Okay, these are the imposing mountains. And they get a lot higher still. The cloud-capped towers, the golden palaces, the great globe itself shall dissolve Shakespeare. Um, now this, uh, I'm going to Africa. Can't believe it. Um, I'm, I am on the ferry. And it's leaving in about 10 minutes. And uh, I've got my coffee set up. And even if they don't let me cross the border for COVID reasons or maybe something wrong with my passport or so, who knows? <laughs> I will set foot on African land. <laughs> All right, over and off. So I didn't have time this morning to properly introduce day four. <laughs> And so as Europe is disappearing behind me on the ferry here, um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you. First, today was extremely stressful this morning. I left at 10.30 the hotel. That was the earliest I could do it because of when breakfast is, we've already talked about it. Breakfast is a lot later here. <laughs> but I thought, well, uh, I have to be there at 13.30 hours, so at 1.30 p.m. Um, at the at the ferry gates uh, for the ferry to leave at two o'clock, and so I thought, well, 190 kilometers, um, I'll have about two hours. I'll I'll make it. Um, well, <laughs> turned out there was a special transport for about 30, no, not quite 30, 20 kilometers that only moved with 30 kilometers per hour and was guarded by the police. Nobody could pass on the highway. And so that really put me into a jam. And I made it to the ferry only thanks to my iPhone and my GPS and uh, in the phone and so on uh, by 129. <laughs> it was actually at the gates. So uh, it, it, the last few cars were sort of let through. It was it was uh, very tight and very stressful. But on the other hand, what I also wanted to share with you, Africa. Uh, so many dreams and imaginations are tied to it. I remember when I was 14, I just had gotten yet another bad grade in school, didn't know how to tell my parents. And I said to my friend, you know, to my school buddy, you know, when I'm 18, uh, I'm getting a little Volkswagen bus, one of those bully buses, and I'm going off to Africa. I've had it. And so my friend said, you know what? I'm, uh, I'm a few days younger uh, than you. You must wait for me. And at the stroke of midnight, when we turn 18, uh, you pick me up. I'm coming with you. <laughs> so this has been going on since 14. Last year, I tried to get to Africa and was prevented by COVID. I could see the shores already and yet couldn't get over. And uh, so now I'm on the ferry. So unless this ferry goes under, um, I'm making it to Africa. So that's what a 40 year, 43 year dream. <laughs> finally coming true. So I'm pretty excited and pretty nervous because um, I have to get to the other side of that little nose that Africa gets there and it gets me right away on the first day straight through the Sahara to get to my hotel. Um, the Sahara, and the hotel fittingly is called Sahara Desert Hotel. <laughs> so uh, this will be all very very interesting. I'll keep you posted. I don't even know whether I'll have internet to post anything in the next few days, but I think so. Uh, also, the prices are starting to calm down quite considerably. Um, the last night I paid 40 euros, which was a very good price for what I got. Um, tonight my hotel is 8 euros per night, plus all the deductions and COVID blah 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 additions. Um, and um, so coming out to a stunning 13 euros for the night. So, uh, and I still have my apple, one of the apples from yesterday, so lunch will be cheap too. <laughs> so it's getting more manageable, over a doubt. Well, well, that is Europe. Little Simi, 
here it comes. The gate is opening and in a mere minute or so we'll be driving to Africa. Well, well, little old Simi drove me to Africa. <laughs> I'm in Ciudad. That was the cheapest port to go to. And uh, now I'm on the way to look for a SIM card for my phone so that it works at reasonable rates. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. What a failure. <laughs> So the last clip showed you how the, in dramatic fashion, the gate opened to Africa on the ferry. <laughs> and so I drove out and from the ferry and nobody checked my passport and that's odd. Am I still in Spain or something? Or why is there no passport check? I guess in Morocco, they don't care that much. And um, so I kept driving and um, every store was closed here in Ceutu. It's a big party, party town, it seems. And so they um, uh, open only at 17.30, so 5.30 p.m. Um, the rest of the day, it's all closed. And um, so I've, I hung around because I needed to buy a SIM card for the phone for Morocco so that I don't pay insane prices. And so I hung around and, and drove around and saw a lot of poverty here. Um, and so then some guy in the bar where I asked whether I could use the Wi-Fi um, told me that, yes, no, we are still in Spain. Morocco just starts um, over uh, where the peninsula ends. And yes, it is Africa, but <laughs> it's still Spain. And so, so I punched in some things in my uh, in my navigator, and I was already wondering it doesn't work. It's it's only showing empty fields after the city, and, and that's weird. And so, so yes, it turns out number one, I'm in Spain, and number two, I found found out that they don't let anyone in unless they're flying. <laughs> and so, when I booked the ferry yesterday. It was interesting that um, <clears throat> all the others were deemed full and only the ferry to Ceuto um, had plenty of space and, and that didn't clue in. And so it turns out, <laughs> yes, I made it to Africa, but not really very far. <laughs> My Sahara Desert is going to have to wait for yet another year <laughs> because of COVID, all borders are closed. So. Nobody gets in, nowhere from no other port, there's no other ferry, nothing to Morocco. You can only fly in with special permission, which I don't understand because the internet says the incidence rate, seven day incidence rate is now down to seven. So that's, that's excellent. Germany is, is at around 14. So they're double as good as, as, as Germany in that they won't let anyone in. So, um, while this has been a huge fail, again, <laughs> ah, what a disappointment. So, anyway, I'm uh, driving the ferry back tomorrow and then I'll probably cruise around in Gibraltar for and see a couple of apes and whatnot um, for a couple of days and then may sadly make my way home. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <sighs> well, what can you do? Over and out. So my comfort now is a bacon crisp pizza. <laughs> Something I know. <laughs> so this is the most exciting part of the city. This is St. Francis Church, but poorly renovated it looks to me. They just painted what was probably in former times stained glass. Um, the church is of course locked. There's this new facade there in front of it. Um, so it seems to be a solemn Novus Ordo church. This is the city square, so to say, of Ceuto. Also, there's not much left here of any old world charm. And there's this old arch there. 
And then there is a building over there that seems of old of sorts, more of a Muslim taste to it, but uh, or a Moroccan taste, maybe I should say. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you've seen this, you've pretty much seen Ceuto. Like I said, it's one huge party town. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs>